Hello everyone. Uh, so today's topic is setting up firm. So in this lecture, I'm going to show a model with both moral hazard and adverse selection. And probably I, I didn't emphasize enough that uh, in also in, also in, in the previous lecture, we saw a model with both uh, moral hazard and adverse selection, right? So the we, last time we discussed the, the model of supervision and collusion. So there, there was a uh, moral hazard element, right? So the the uh, the principal had to give some incentive for the monitor to reveal the true information. So there is more hazard uh, element in it, and also there is adverse selection element, uh, which is the uh, the true cost of the uh, seller. Was it was it buyer? Anyway, so there 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 were both elements of moral hazard and adverse selection. So here we we'll see uh, something similar. But the, the, the model itself is, I mean, this model is more uh, traditional, uh, more, more, more standard, more, more typical uh, contract theory model. So you will find this uh, interesting. So here we go, selling a firm versus hiring a manager. So that's the question. So let's consider the problem of selling a firm or any other productive asset to a new owner slash manager. So this new owner slash manager may be more productive or less pro productive or more able or more capable or less capable. So there is an uh, element of adverse selection, right? So there is asymmetric information about the productivity or, or ability. Right. And, and also, uh, she may put in more or less effort, so there may be some more hazard element in it as well. So you, you have a business and you cannot uh, run it yourself anymore uh, for whatever reason. So you want to uh, find someone uh, who can take care of this business. And the question is, will you sell off the firm entirely and forget about that? Uh, or you hire a manager and you stay as the owner, but you just, you know, do not run the uh, business anymore uh, by yourself. So that's the question. So uh, the answer will depend on the intensity or severity of uh, each problem. You know, if adverse se selection problem is more uh, severe, then you want to uh, hire a manager, for example, and if if more hazard element is more severe, more more hazard problem is more severe, then you may want to sell the firm entirely. Okay, so you see something like that, and we we'll see uh, what the optimal contract looks like in the presence of one or both problems, uh, and we we'll see which kind of strategy is better: selling a firm or hiring a manager. And this discussion is relevant for determining how to structure corporate acquisition deals and privatization transactions, something like that. So here is the model. Uh, we consider uh, two players, two actors, uh, two risk neutral uh, players. One is seller, the other is buyer. So the seller is selling a firm or you know, some asset and buyer will uh, run the business. So the buyer will generate some revenue using the asset uh, by, by, by you know, running this business. And the revenue X is binary. So the outcome is binary. It's either zero or large R. And the probability that the uh, output or the revenue equals to R is theta times E. So it's, it's not just function of effort or it's just function of productivity. It's, it's a function of both uh, ability and effort, right? So theta is type or ability and E is the effort. So the bias ability uh, is theta, which is either theta L or theta H and obviously theta L will be smaller than theta H and the probability that the, uh, theta is theta H equals to beta.
okay? And the bias effort cost is quadratic effort cost, uh, which is very familiar to us now. And we'll assume this small c, this cost parameter, small c is very large. So in equilibrium or in, in whatever situation, uh, the probability will be, I mean, the probability of success, the probability that revenue equals to large R is strictly smaller than zero. Uh, so, sorry, smaller than one. Okay, so that will be the case if C is very large and theta is small, right? So if C is very large and theta is small, then equilibrium effort or the, you know, any reasonable effort level will be small then theta times e will be smaller than 1. And, you know, the probability should be smaller than 1. And seller, the seller offers a menu of contract. So, you know, th there, there, because there are two types, uh, the seller will offer uh, two contracts. One is TLRL, the other is THRH. Okay, so TLRL or THRH. So what is T and R? What, what, what are T and R? TI is a upfront cash payment. So to buy this asset or firm, the buyer has to pay TI upfront. You know, at the moment that the buyer signs the contract, the buyer has to pay TI. Okay, that's upfront cash payment. What is RI? RI is a repayment from the future revenue. So RI is the payment that the buyer has to make uh, after the revenue is generated. Okay, so after revenue is generated, the buyer will pay RI. And if the revenue, so again, the revenue is either zero or R. So if the revenue is zero, then you know the buyer has nothing, you know, no cash at all. Then the buyer cannot repay uh, to the seller. So here we have this uh, uh, constraint. Uh, it's called mutual limited liability constraint. It says uh, RI, the repayment RI, cannot be smaller. So, sorry, it cannot it cannot be larger than x. So x is the revenue generated by the buyer, and if the revenue is zero, then ri cannot be greater than zero, right? Because the buyer has nothing. Buyer buyer didn't get any uh, revenue. So in that case, the buyer uh, cannot pay, cannot repay to the seller, and this repayment should be larger than zero, right? So what that means is the, the seller, you know, the, the seller doesn't have to pay anything to the buyer afterward. You know, e even if the buyer uh, failed to make any money, the seller will not help the buyer. The seller is not charity, you know, the seller is just selling a firm. So RI uh, should be greater than or equal to zero. So x so ri should be smaller than x that's for the buyer so if the buyer if, if the buyer fails to make any money then the buyer doesn't have to pay anything to the seller and also uh, ev even in that case the seller doesn't have to pay to the buyer right so the seller is you know just selling a firm so the seller cannot uh, doesn't have to pay, pay anything to the buyer so this is uh, limited liability constraint and it is mutual it is, it is both for the buyer and for the seller and the buyers payoff uh, when uh, I type buyer to this contract I the buyers payoff looks like this uh, the theta I times EI uh, times large R minus small R minus TI minus C uh, times E squared over 2 so uh, theta i is the ability and e is the effort so theta times e is the probability that the revenue is large r right in that case 
So if the revenue is positive, the revenue is large R, then in that case the buyer pays back as much as RI. And what is TI? TI is the upfront payment. So the buyer has to pay something. Uh, but I want to say, I, I want to emphasize this first. So TI can be negative. Okay, so TI can be negative. What that means is the seller can pay the buyer. So it's like the seller hires the buyer. Uh, in that case, uh, the seller has to uh, pay the buyer. Right, so we allow that TI uh, to be negative. So it can be positive, it can be negative. And C times E, e, e squared over 2 is the effort cost. Right, so does this make sense? So you know the the first term is the the revenue minus the repayment and t is the upfront payment which can be possible negative and the effort cost so the optimal choice of the effort so if you differentiate the uh, buyer's payoff with respect to e then you get the solution which is written here the optimal choice of effort E i is theta i, so subscript i is missing, so you may want to uh, write that down. So theta i times r minus small r uh, small r i uh, over c. So that's the optimal effort level. And the corresponding payoff can be written like this: theta times r minus small r squared over two c minus t. So uh, how, do, how do you get this payoff? You just plug this optimal effort to E in the uh, you know, bias payoff. Then you'll get the expression at the bottom. Okay, so this is the uh, expected payoff of, for the buyer in equilibrium. So given uh, Ri and Ti, so the in the first stage, the uh, the seller will offer some contract, so actually many of contract, and then the buyer will choose one of them, so either R RL, TL, or RH, TH. So there are two contracts, so the buyer chooses either of them, and then the you know buyer runs the business and generate some revenue. If the, if the revenue is positive, then uh, the buyer uh, makes some repayment. And you know eventually, the expected payoff will be this expression at the bottom. OK? So the seller's problem uh, can be written like this. So the seller is maximizing uh, the uh, total expected uh, revenue from the buyer. So uh, with probability beta, the buyer will be type H. Uh, in that case, uh, the buyer will choose uh, H contract. So the uh, upfront payment is TH, and the uh, revenue, the, the repayment, is theta H times EH times RH. Right. So that's the uh, expected revenue when the buyer is type H. And also, you know, you, you can read the rest of the uh, expression similarly. And let's just look at the constraints. So what is the first constraint? The first constraint is IC constraint. What is the second cons constraint? The second constraint is IC constraint. So what what's the difference between the first constraint and the second constraint? I, I, I said both of them are IC constraint, incentive constraint. Uh, the first incentive constraint is with, res with respect to the choice of the contract, right? So at first the buyer has to choose either H contract or L contract. And if you are L type buyer, then you are supposed to choose, uh, you, you are better off by choosing L contract. And if you are H type buyer, then you are better off by choosing uh, H type contract. So that constraint is written in the first line, right? So the first IC constraint is 
uh, is with respect to the adverse selection. And the second IC constraint is obviously uh, with respect to the moral hazard problem, right? So the effort decision uh, will be optimal uh, for the buyer. And the last constraint, the third constraint, is the IR constraint, right? So we have two types of IC constraint. Uh, one is for the adverse selection, uh, the other is for the moral hazard, and we also have the uh, IR constraint. Okay? All right. Uh, moral hazard only. So uh, we'll, we'll, so here, here is our plan. So we'll see this problem uh, case by case. So first we'll see the a situation where there is no adverse selection problem, so there is only moral hazard problem, and we analyze that. So it's like you know, in in typical contract theory models, uh, we in in in, pre in most of previous lectures, I uh, first set up the benchmark, right? So these are like benchmarks. So p first we we'll assume that there is no uh, adverse selection problem. So suppose that the seller is able to observe the buyer's productivity or ability. And then later, uh, we'll see the situation where uh, there is no moral hazard problem. And we'll compare the optimal contract, right? In, in one unified framework, we can compare the e effect of moral hazard and uh, adverse selection. And then later, finally, uh, we'll consider the situation where there is uh, there are both moral hazard and adverse selection problems. Okay, so that's our plan. So uh, let's let's look at this uh, seller's problem. So the seller's problem is just you know we, we can just maximize the uh, the seller's revenue uh, type by type because the seller can uh, observe the buyer's type, so the seller can make a customized uh, contract to each buyer, right? So the seller's problem looks like this. So the, uh, the seller is just maximizing the buyer-specific con uh, specific contract, the buyer-specific TNR, uh, subject to two constraints. So we don't, have to the, we don't have to consider the IC constraint for uh, adverse selection. So we just have the moral hazard uh, IC constraint and the IR constraint, right? So if you solve this model, so how, how do you solve this model? You know, it's simple. You know, we we are we 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 now uh, are pretty sure that the IR constraint must be binding. So you know, we have the binding IR constraint and. So that's it. You know, we have two constraints. So, okay, you may be confused with this I subscript, you know, L and H. But we can forget about this I subscript for a moment. So what, what I'm saying is we know the type. So the seller observe the type. So we, we are just designing, con designing a contract uh, only for L type and then only for H type. So, you know, they are just two separate problems. So, uh, here we have two constraints, just two constraints. You know, you may feel like there are four constraints, but that's not the case. Here we only have two constraints, and uh, we know the IR constraint must be binding, so we have two. Uh, Binding constraint to equality constraint, and you know maximizing this uh, simple function uh, with two binding constraint is pretty simple. We have done that many many times. So, what's the solution? The solution looks like this. So, the optimal contract is like uh, you set R H and R L equals to zero, and what does that mean? You don't get any money from the buyer afterward. You just get the uh, upfront payment, 
So what does that mean? You you just sell the firm for cash only. So you the seller just sell the firm and forget about the firm forever. So the you know the seller sells all the stock to the buyer, and the buyer will take care of the uh, the business take care of the business. So that that will be the way to maximize the incentive to put optimal effort, right? So here again, let me remind uh, remind you that we are looking at a model with pure moral hazard. We assume that adverse selection problem doesn't exist. So only moral hazard problem is there. In that case, selling the firm contract is optimal. Uh, when, is, when, when is it true? So uh, if the buyer is risk neutral, then selling the firm contract is uh, optimal, right? So if the buyer is risk neutral, just then the seller just sell the firm to the buyer and the buyer takes entire risk and also entire uh, benefit, uh, take entire responsibility. And that's the uh, way to give full incentive, right? So that's the optimal optimal contract. So RH and RL equal to zero, and the seller just get the entire surplus uh, using T. The seller sells the firm uh, and does the seller doesn't get any repayment. Uh, any repayment will reduce the incentive to work. So to maximize the incentive to work, uh, you want to minimize the repayments and also or the, you, want, you may want to just you know get the entire surplus using the fixed payment, the upfront fixed payment. okay? So when the, so here, here is one example. So when the government is privatizing a state-owned firm, it should sell off 100% uh, to minimize the incentive problem. So when a, a government is privatizing a firm, uh, typically the purpose of selling the firm is to give very strong incentive to the buyer. And assuming that uh, the buyers are revealing uh, their types uh, by in, in the process of auction or whatever, uh, the you know the adverse selection problem may not be most important problem. May probably the more important problem is more hassle problem. In that case, uh, the government may want to sell the firm to the you know private managers uh, to maximize the incentive to work. All right. So and then the next model is adverse selection model. So. Let's suppose the buyer's effort level is fixed at some level, E hat. So there is no moral hazard problem. Uh, the only problem that we have to uh, consider is the adverse selection problem. And the seller's problem now looks like this. So with probability beta, the buyer will be H type. With probability 1 minus beta, the buyer will be L type. And here, uh, as you can see, uh, E is fixed at E hat, and and what about the constraints? So we have constraints with respect to for for the adverse selection, and how many how many constraints do we have? Now we have four constraints, two IC constraint and two IR constraint. I mean. Uh, the IC constraint for the high type, IC constraint for the low type, and IR constraint for the high type, and IR constraint for the low type. So we have four constraints. And how do you solve this? Uh, it's pretty simple. I mean, I mean, pretty similar to what we have done before, right? So we have considered the model with adverse selection only. Uh, in that case. But here, uh, okay, so this, this model is a little bit different, uh, but uh, it's actually simpler. How can you see that? Uh, let, let's look at the solution first. So 
the solution is is polar opposite, right? So polar opposite to the previous solution. So Rh and Rl equals to R. Why 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 do we do that? If this is the case, then it eliminates the heterogeneity of the buyer. So how how does it work? So let's look at this uh, expression at the bottom. Okay, Let, let's look at this uh, expected payoff of the buyer. And small r is now large r. In that case. So if small r is large r, then theta disappears from the picture, right? So theta is the type, and if small r equals to large r, then uh, we can eliminate theta from the picture. So we can eliminate the heterogeneity of the buyer. So we just deal with just one type of buyer, okay? In in principle, I mean, I mean, theoretically, if small r is large r, so that that is actually nice. I mean, by setting small r equals to large r, we can eliminate this adverse selection problem, right? So we can eliminate this uh, asymmetric information about type. Then you can uh, extract the entire surplus uh, using whatever i mean i mean you can extract the entire surplus using uh, small r and uh, for the buyers to participate in this deal uh, you have to give some money upfront so ti will be negative so t will be negative so what's going on here so the seller is basically hiring hiring a manager so the seller pays some wage to it, to the uh, manager, and you know get the revenue. So the seller is basically keeping the seller is keeping the stock, and is hiring a manager, and you know the seller will get the revenue uh, if generated. So in the absence of more has a problem, there is no cost of increasing RI. Uh, in the previous model, uh, we saw that if you increase RI, it reduced the incentive for the buyer to work. But uh, here we assume there is no moral hazard problem, so we don't have to uh, we don't have to worry about that. So the you can increase RI uh, as much as you want. Uh, in that case, you can eliminate the heterogeneity of buyer. So that's that's nice, right? So on the other hand, by increasing RI, the seller can reduce the heterogeneity of the buyer, thus can reduce the information rent. So that will be optimal. So the we saw two cases, right? One case with moral hazard, the other case with adverse selection, and the optimal contract looks polar opposite. You know, quite different. So in more hazard situation, R small r equals to zero, and uh, the seller gets the entire surplus using uh, this uh, upfront payment. And in adverse selection case, uh, the seller gets the repayment only, and the seller actually upfront the seller pays the buyer, right? So it's basically it's like the seller is hiring a manager. So uh, finally, uh, let's consider the situation where there exist both adverse selection and moral hazard problems. Not surprisingly, the optimal contract in this case is some combination of the two extreme solutions, and one can show that as before, uh, the IRL and ICH are binding and. Uh, if you solve the problem, then uh, the solution will look like this. First, notice that Rh equals to zero means that you want to give full incentive, right? You want to give full incentive to the high type buyer. 
So for the high type buyer, you just get the uh, surplus using upfront payment. So for the high type buyer, you are selling the firm. And for the low type buyer, that's not the case. Right? So for the low type buyer, uh, you reduce the incentive to work somehow, and that will make the incentive constraint uh, loosened. I mean, the, the incentive constraint for the high type will be relaxed uh, by increasing RL. And that will reduce the information rent given to the high type buyer. So what's going on is to more productive buyer, uh, the seller gives full incentive uh, to maximize the effort. And that will maximize the surplus. And that's, that's really important in this deal. On the other end, uh, the seller distorts the less productive buyer's incentive so as to reduce the information rent uh, that should be given to the high type buyer. And also, uh, uh, by analyzing this solution, uh, you can see that uh, if beta increases, RL increases, and also as beta increases, uh, TH increases. What does that mean? When the type is more likely to be high, uh, it is less costly to distort the low type transaction. So you increase RL. And in that case, uh, the information rent uh, that the seller has to give to the uh, low type, uh, sorry, high type buyer uh, becomes smaller. Okay. All right. Uh, so that's pretty much it uh, for today. So when hand, handing over a form to another owner slash manager, one has to decide how much financial participation uh, to keep or, or how, how much stock to keep, right? And uh, in, in such a situation, the moral hazard and adverse selection often coexist, uh, but the optimal way to address each problem is markedly different. So to address moral hazard, uh, selling the firm in cash is the best. To address adverse selection, keeping the stock is the best. So uh, two problems uh, together can sometimes result in trade-off and thus uh, there will be some welfare loss. Okay, so, uh, okay, I, I, I didn't emphasize this point enough. So uh, let's go back to, uh, bef okay, this will be really quick. So let's just focus on this for just a moment. Okay, so the moral hazard, here is solution. This contract is efficient. I didn't emphasize this enough, but this solution is, this contract is in, uh, efficient. There is more has a problem, but you sell, you sold the firm to the buyer, and the buyer is now the owner. So the buyer takes entire responsibility, benefit, risk, whatever. So the uh, the buyer will put optimal effort. Okay. So in that sense, this contract is efficient. And at the selection case, this solution is efficient. Okay. So what, what I'm saying is there could be both problems, both adverse selection and moral hazard problem, but we consi consider, uh, at first, we consider uh, the situation where only one of, pro one of the problems exist, and in both situations, uh, the contract is efficient. Right, so in, in, in adverse selection situation, uh, by setting small r equals to large r, uh, you eliminate the adverse selection problem. There is no uh, asymmetric information problem about type. So, you know, the solution, the, the, the contract will be efficient. Okay, but if both problem exist, then there is inefficiency, right? So here, uh, rl is positive, so the R, so the 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 optimal uh, repayment is zero uh, to maximize the incentive to work, but here RL is positive, which means this contract is not efficient. So 
you, 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 now, now you can understand this uh, last sentence better. So the two problems together can sometimes result in trade-off and thus uh, some efficiency loss uh, uh, can uh, take place. All right, so that's it for today. Uh, bye.